On today's part in my take, we have a very special guest. It is Donnie Brasco, the real Donnie Brasco, Joe Pistone. If you don't know the story, if you hadn't seen the movie, Joe Pistone went undercover in the New York Mafia in a crime family for five years in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, ended up like 200 indictments just based on his investigation. He lived the life. He's in witness protection still. Fascinating interview, something a little different. So make sure you listen to that. We also have Russell Wilson maybe demanding a trade, but also not. It's very weird. Russell Wilson day, Deshaun Watson adamantly demanding a trade. Fire Fest of the week. Hank has a new idea to get us rich, which I think he's going to share. Are you going to share? Fuck yeah, you're going to share. Pack Friday show. Let's get it going. And it's brought to you by our friends at Verizon 5G. You've heard us talk a lot about how Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband makes gaming better, ultra low lag, console quality gaming on the go. Well, we're not just talking gaming. Verizon designed their 5G to make the things we do every day better. With the coverage of 5G nationwide, millions of people can now do what they love in Verizon 5G quality. And in parts of many cities where people can use massive capacity and ultra low lag, Verizon has that ultra wideband we've been talking about, the fastest 5G in the world. This is the 5G that's built for you. This is 5G built right only from Verizon. 5G ultra wideband available only in parts of select cities. 5G nationwide available in 2,700 uh, plus cities. Global claim based on open signal independent analysis. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Verizon 5G. Today is Friday, February 26th, PFT. Your mind, it's your greatest weapon. Agreed. Always persevere, always have a great perspective, and always have a great purpose in your life. Agreed. Even though we don't get to play today, we always win. Fact. Winning is the only option. Hashtag grateful. The best is ahead. Also fact. Cross training made easier with my hashtag Bose frame, team Bose, hashtag Bose. Also correct. These are the quotes I will live by if Russell Wilson becomes a bear. There you go. There you go. Your mind is your greatest weapon. Your mind is your greatest weapon. What about my ass? Nope. Your mind. Okay. All your right. mind is your great. Russell Wilson has uh, demanded kind of the most passive aggr aggressive trade request in the history of sports. Well, it's kind of like he's entering the transfer portal. It's not really a full demand. He's he he says I'm not requesting a trade unless it's to a team that I would want to be traded to. Do you know what he's asking? He's he's basically in a marriage and he's asking for a hall pass. And then he listed like six different women that he would like to have sex. Like, hey, uh, actually, our neighbor that he knows. is a hall pass. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's not it's not Jennifer Aniston. It's uh, uh, Bethany who lives next door. Yeah, it's your friend from the PTA. Right, she'd be on my hall list. Hall pass. Yeah, you toss you toss in a couple like uh, Scarlett Johansson's on there, Halle Berry, uh, your mom. Um, and then we'll go with uh, Megan Fox. Okay, so he has he has said to the Seahawks he doesn't want to be traded, but if they were to trade him, mm -hmm. hypothetically speaking, he would want to go to one of four teams. The Raiders, the Bears, the Saints, and the Jets. No, or the Dolphins. The Dolphins, not the Jets. I've seen the Jets as well for not some reason. Jets. Okay, not the Jets. Just the fact that Russell Wilson has put the Bears in this list is like maybe the biggest win the Bears have had in a while. It's huge. Six or seven years. Actually, our our friend Robert Mays had a tweet that was that sums up the Bears perfectly. He listed the best Bears uh, of all time, QBs. Number one, Sid Luckman. Number two, Jay Cutler. Number three, Eric Kramer. Number four, Russell Wilson saying he'd play for the Bears. Mm, I put him at five. I put Sexy Rexy ahead of him, the original RG3. Yes. And now this is something that J.J. Watt I don't think would ever do. Something like what Russ is pulling, he would JJ mm -hmm. Watt would demand a trade. He would uh, he would add, or excuse me, he would demand his release so that he wouldn't become a burden on the team and Correct. he could go out and not be a distraction to Correct. the locker room. Russell Wilson on the other totally hand, wouldn't milk his free agency period. Uh, no. You can't you, you can't, can't spell sign right now, Mister Unlimited. Without me, the league league year hasn't started. Hank, what do you want him to tamper? No, you want JJ Watt? Listen, if Russell Wilson somehow, some way, now. I, I, let me take a step back, well, real Cat, quick. Let me, let me, can, let me. Can I? Let me. Yeah. Let me just say though that if you went to the Bears, something terrible would happen. Of course, of course. But I, I still would love to to have that terrible thing happen for the day that he signed for me to be that. Excited. You'd want, you know what? It's a future me dude, problem. Big Cat, an off season where Russell Wilson is your quarterback would be the best exactly. period of time in Bears history. Right. Ever. Exactly. It'd be so, incredible. Yeah. I think 
that he threw the Bears in here because he was like, okay, I want to go to the Saints because Sean Payton. I want to go to the Dolphins because I want to live in Miami. I want to go to the Raiders because I want to live in Las Vegas. I want to go to Chicago because there's a chance that Ryan Pace will pay me $700 million. Mm-hmm. And well, so that is where the Bears, you know, and guess what? I don't think Russell Wilson uh, is worth seven hundred million dollars, but I also never got an MVP vote. I would love to just have a competent quarterback, and so, that would be a very fun experience. I think that he threw the Bears in there as like kind of throwing a bone for the Seahawks because he knows that if the Bears are in the discussion, his trade value goes up, mm-hmm. and so that means that other teams would be able to give a little bit more money. I think he said Dallas too. <sighs> it's basically all cities that Sierra would want to live in. Yes, it's like uh, where 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 is uh, a little bit sunnier? Where can you be outdoors? For eight months of the year, all all I'm going to say is that if Russell Wilson somehow, some way becomes a bear, I will buy into. I might, I might actually, I might just become the most religious person in the world. Or just become I might unlimited. Just, yeah, just praise Jesus every single day. Like I will, I will tweet about the 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 corniest uh, sayings. Everything. I'll be a Mister Unlimited. I'll do post game. Uh, videos in black and white to Kobe, thinking about Kobe when Russell Wilson plays for the Bears. Like, the Bears beat the Lions in week three. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was for Kobe. You and Russell do have, like, similar fashion senses. Hawaiian also, shirts. Hawaiian shirts. Jeans. Jeans. You're both dads. Dads, yeah. Then that's really where it stops. You both drink water sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I, ready. I'm ready to get hurt. I'm ready to just – this is – you know what, though? I don't really care. Just the fact that he mentioned it, it is really like he, – he, it could be a total throw-in, but he put us in the sentence that said that he would consider being a Chicago Bear, and I'm like, all right, great. Someone wants us. That's cool. I, I don't think he's going to go anywhere. I no. Think, I think he's no. going to stay in Seattle, but it's, it's nice to dream. He His biggest qualm with the organization appears to be like, oh, I didn't realize that playing in the NFL that my coach – would have his sons also on the staff, mm-hmm. and they wouldn't be held to the same standard. It's like you know that you play in the NFL, right? right. Like you're, that's kind of signing. That's part of what you're signing up for. It's like you're going to be busy most Sundays, and your coach is going to have a couple of his shithead sons running around fucking everything up. Mm-hmm. And so the the other story that came out about Russell Wilson was that he apparently uh, stormed out of a meeting before the Thursday night football game against the Cardinals because he was. Uh, give, basically giving a presentation on how the offense could be fixed, which that was probably the lamest. Well, let me do two things. If he's not a bear, that was the lamest presentation ever where Russell Wilson was like, I want to throw the ball 75 times a game. Mm-hmm. Let me be Mr. Unlimited. Now, bear Russell Wilson, how do the Seahawks – not listen to Russell Wilson, their franchise quarterback. Shame on them if if he came to Chicago. Matt Nagy would listen to everything he says. It's great leadership. Yeah, that's exactly what you want out of your signal caller. Mm-hmm. You want a guy that's not afraid to take the lot to to coach his coaches up. But I I just it's I mean every time I read a story like this, like why couldn't I fucking known about this before I bet on that game? Which one? Russell oh, they, Wilson they, storming they, they, they out. Coaches, like it's, yeah. it's the Mike McCarthy watermelons again. Yep, I, I'm you. sick of reading stories in, in February where I can actually point to it and be like, oh, yeah, I lost that bet. That makes sense. Can we all stop for a second, though, and just imagine Russell Wilson in Las Vegas? Yeah. Just What a waste of real estate that would be for him. He would probably try to have like a magic show on the strip. Yeah, probably he'd, he'd be front row at the uh, at like the Celine Dion, like a Joel review Austin every show. night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You could. Oh, I could totally see that. Yeah. Hey, Dave Copperfield. Babe, I was thinking we had this great idea for a magic show um, that removes all the satanic imagery, though. Yeah. So uh, basically, card tricks. Yeah, I could absolutely see Russell Wilson doing that. So I, this is it's it's wild to think that you know Stafford obviously already got traded. Dak is still up in the air. Russell Wilson, passive aggressive trade request. Deshaun. Deshaun. Apparently not getting traded. Jack Easterby. You don't want to fuck with Jack Easterby. Well, that's a man that has read. He lives out of the deal every single day. Apparently not getting traded, but also apparently refusing to play for the Texans. Yeah. Like, so the story came out that he met with uh, the new coach for the Texans, uh, Cully. Yep. That one's that gonna be. Right. That we're gonna have to remind ourselves of that. Cully, and then I'm having a hard time remembering Sirianni. Yep, Sirianni and Cully. Uh, so they had a meeting on Friday night, and and Deshaun Watson was like, "Absolutely not, not playing for the team. Sorry, just not gonna happen." Yeah. So it is a game of chicken. Deshaun, just get fat. 
I would love to see a player just be like, I truly hate them so much. I will, I will retire. Yeah, I mean, be, if any franchise is able to do that to a person, it would be the Houston Texans. Just get fat, Deshaun. I don't know if that would actually like change things um, because you say that you're not going to play. They say that they're not going to trade you, but it would make my life a lot more fun if every time I saw a picture of fat Deshaun, I got mm-hmm. to giggle at it. Yeah, and Eat then there's way out of town. Then there's JJ Watt. JJ was also doing his free agency tour. Oh, and we have uh, sticking on quarterbacks. Big Ben is is officially officially back, yep, which yep. is the best thing ever. I mean that that Thank brought you, a ben. tear to my eyes. One more one more fucking you know trip around the sun, the last dance, Big Ben version. Uh, Drew Brees is apparently not like he is retiring, but he hasn't said it yet. Which makes no sense. But he's going to be in the booth next year, right? But he hasn't said that he's retiring. He's retiring. I'm yeah, put, but I'm putting Drew Brees out to pasture. What, what people are saying now is, why has Drew Brees not retired? I don't have a good answer for that, but I'm putting it out to pasture. I was going to make a joke that I'm not going to make because I'm not going to make the joke. About his ribs? No. What, what was it about? It was going to be something along the lines of, he's probably still at the golf course waiting for Tiger. Okay, thank you for not that, making that, that joke. You can't make no, that you can't joke. Make you that. can't make that joke. Can't make that you joke. You cannot make that joke. So it. I didn't make the joke. Drew Brees. Right? I did God, not make Thank God. We, Drew we all agree I did not make no, we that didn't. joke. And thank right? God you did. But Drew Brees is right, also you. one of the quarterbacks that had his legs broken in those rumors. Yes, that we right, talked about. Right, exactly. Uh, Big Ben, so yes, he's coming back. He's going to just basically loan money to the Steelers because the Steelers, they don't want to pay him because he's frankly not worth anything right mm-hmm. now. Big Ben doesn't want to take money from the Steelers because well, he, has he, to take something. he knows. <laughs> yeah. So, like, how is that going to work? I, I think that Big Ben should start up his own TB12 method, Yep. the BB7 method, which is really the way that – like the people always say, Tom Brady. Well, your your wife is a supermodel. She brings in hundreds of millions of dollars. It does make it easier for him to get paid less. But we also speculate that Tom Brady has that side cash coming in yep. from the TB12 method, yep. the BB7 method, the Big Ben Seven method could be the answer to the Steelers' cap hell problems, where he starts selling like used medical equipment on eBay and gas station boner pills and yeah. chloroform uh passwords to browsers yes yeah, yeah. that i don't he's I not I don't using use he's not using them guys yeah free password <laughs> uh yeah so and, and then what what other news we have well nba all-star team was announced are is anyone excited for the nba all-star game i feel like it's i don't the even weirdest event. I, I don't even think that the players are excited for it i was just happy that zach levine got the credit because i'm all in on zach levine uh he's been phenomenal what his dad is electric too yes Yes, they like had the video where they were surprised him, and, and his dad was like, "You ready?" For, or Zach Levine was like, "You ready for Atlanta?" And the dad was just like, "Are there casinos?" <laughs> yeah, that was his, his dad, only question. Well, Zach Levine had a quote a couple of weeks ago where he's like, "The only two people I'm afraid of are God and my dad." And then if you've seen a have you seen a picture of his dad? Yeah, his dad is a uh, not to be fucked with type mm-hmm. of guy. But yeah, the All Star Game, I don't. NBA just needs to bring back the dunk contest. It's very simple. Just bring it back with like the the best players. Yes, I agree. The dunk contest can solve everything. Um, and then college basketball, we had a great Roy Williams uh, quote last night, even though he shouldn't have. So he, he they they scheduled Marquette for an extra game, something Duke would never do because Duke is scared. Mm-hmm. They lost to Marquette, bad loss, and terrible what he loss. He he basically said, "This sucks, y'all." Y'all, when I schedule these games, I don't know what we're going to lose. If if we won the game, you'd say, why well, just schedule Marquette? And yeah. Dadgummit, I'm, Dadgummit. I'm going to schedule Marquette. And if we win, then I look – you are, are sitting up here saying you're sitting on schedule. If I lose the Dadgum game, then you guys are telling me I, I, why I schedule, you should, why I schedule Marquette for. So, y'all, I can't win with y'all. And then it storms out. That and, was – Jerry Jones, Roy Williams, and Patrick Mahomes all together. Yeah, that, I mean that's pretty good. <laughs> that averages out to a, to a Roy Williams, so I'm okay with that. And all you haters out there that told me I was an idiot when I said Roy Williams is a better coach than Coach K, he doesn't get the shine. This is just another market in my Wait, favor on this. But well, hold on, what's going to happen here, and why I just said this sucks is there's now a world where Duke's going to make the tournament this year and UNC isn't. I don't care. I don't care. Okay, it's gonna suck because I actually, who? What's Duke's remaining schedule? I mean, the ACC is not very good this year. They might get like a top four seed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think? Hank has a point. What? Because they just announced that there Always. are going to be replacement teams with COVID. The first four teams out are going to be on standby. Oh, no. that's and such you, blue balls! So bullshit. God, God forbid Gonzaga, Baylor, Michigan have COVID outbreak. Duke replaces them. At the, the one seed? seed? That's what's going to happen. They're no. not going to pass around. What the fuck? But Duke could also be a 16 seed. 
Yeah, Wait. that would be awesome to see that yeah. pounded um, by amazing. Gonzaga. Isn't this again for the, for like the second time exactly what happened in Harry Potter: The Goblet of Fire, where they added another team in just to make that make sure that the ratings went up? That's true. Oh, wow. R.I.P. Said what a what? I never, I never yeah, that's a fantastic books. reference. PFT. I had no idea you Sick had that reference. in you. Thank you. Well, I, it happened with Zion with the Pelicans, and now they're doing it with another Duke squad. Cedric. So Got the fucking Duke rewind has, of that deal. Duke, I've been saying that for years. Duke uh, has Louisville. Yeah, Louisville left him, yeah. Georgia Tech, UNC. Hank All is, tournament Hank caliber teams. Uh, yeah, Georgia Tech will actually be I mean, the toughest like, game. I mean, just access something that I forgot about like since I was like 12 years old. So, it's the Stones. <laughs> it's Duke, stones. Georgia Tech. I actually the stone referenced this kidney. on my pod last night. <laughs> what well, shout out the pod? Uh, Barstool Bench Mob. Uh, Duke, Georgia Wait, Tech. Wait, B-Mob or? Oh. Hank, Which, that's not very wide to review. Oh, right. oh yeah, I forgot that yeah. was just one. Um, Fuck you, Duke Hank. Georgia Tech Tuesday could very Scale. well be a loser leave sound game. Yes, that would be guys a loser. credit though, but that is mm -hmm. a loser leave sound. Loser like leave game. sound. We didn't come up with loser leave stuff. No, we didn't. I still <laughs> credit <laughs> wrestling and everything. No nope, credit um, you guys. Okay, all right. I thought you did it. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so Duke, they're gonna make the tournament. I just know they will. Of course. If they make the tournament, you got to get a cat, Hank. No. Uh, Why? You guys have to get a cat. All right. How about this, Hank? What if Duke? makes the tournament as one of those replacement COVID teams, and then they end up losing. If Duke wins the championship, you guys should get a cat. Okay, yeah. If Duke wins the championship, I'll get a cat. Yep. Done. And if Duke... Well, you have to have a cat. It'll be an outdoor cat. They make it to the championship and lose. No. Final Four. No. S Sweet 16. Sweet no. 16 and lose. No, because if they get a one seed, it'll be a walk-in to the Final Four. But that's a risk. You have to put something in this. Yeah, if they make it to the championship and lose. No, 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 no. No, it's got to be. Come on, it's the same final bet for four, both of final us. Four. I, no, final no, four. No, no. I, I think elite eight. I think if they get to the elite eight and lose, you have to get a cat. If they lose in the sweet sixteen, no cat. No cat. They would. No. Yeah. You think they yeah. Can win but no, but what? You, but what, 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 what's on? What, what's no, on final it? four. I think final four. If they get to the final four, you have to get a cat. And if they win the title, we have to get a cat. All right. All right. Okay. All right. One cat between us. Yes, we'll yeah. split it in half. It can be a, a barn cat. <laughs> Billy will There's do it actually for us. a new litter of barn no. cat. Oh, no. Oh, god it, damn it. <laughs> Billy, you are you going to get the what was the riboplasma? Toxoplasmosis? <laughs> what are you That gonna, was a wild time, right? Yeah. Didn't you suggest no, getting toxoplasmosis <laughs> to attack the covid cells? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was more that in a bunch of people with motorcycle accidents have toxoplasmosis because they have no fear. By the way, w mm. we should just, for the people <laughs> who are uh, listening and not watching, um, Billy has the most unwrinkled or wrinkled jean or pants of all time. It looks like his legs are in two scrotums. I just want you to listen to it and to know that that's what he's doing. He lo Yeah, Chipotle rappers, as Ken Jack put out there. Not all of us have advanced laundry techniques. I, Billy, techniques. I, you have right, a like a, a laundry, like a. I support you, Billy. What do you mean by Thank advanced you. laundry techniques? Do you mean a, a dryer, <laughs> an iron, <laughs> an iron? But <laughs> if I didn't support you, Billy, I would say I also don't have an iron, but I've never let my pants get to that point. But I do support you, and I'm with you. I actually on this think journey. you balled them up and you put them under your mattress. You've been sleeping on them for six months. I have a solid laundry apparatus technique thing I do where you put in I actually machine. do have a washer and a dryer I know what he's gonna say what you're you, and because you, you're you're 21 are you 22 yet I'm 22, I'm 22 all right so you're 22 you're gonna always be 21 but you do and w listen this is actually the relatable part Billy so I'm, I'm gonna have your back here thank you you do your laundry you do the you wash it and you put it in the dryer and then instead of doing the extra step of folding everything and putting it away you just take your clothes from the dryer all week yeah it's great yeah. that's actually an efficient system yeah. And then you put it in the washing machine right at when you take it off for the shower. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you you basically you don't need a closet. Exactly. You can just I, have your. Can washer I give you a life hack? So yes. here's a great way to just get rid of wrinkles. You just take like one sock or one shirt and you wet it down, and then you put it in the dryer with the other thing you want to dry, and then the steam while it's in the dryer gets rid of the wrinkles. How long? I don't know, like ten minutes. So do it while minutes. I shower. Yeah. Perfect. That's mm -hmm. actually Boom. that's actually huge. Mm -hmm. Or you so hang much. the the pants up in the shower. I'm a okay. guy that knows how to take care of some big wrinkly pants. You just hang it up in there with you. The steam lets it all fall down. Yep. That's actually huge. Maybe, so put, even a, so maybe put a towel under the door so that you don't yeah. let any of the steam out. Hot box it. Yep. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, a little, little steam room in your shower. Oh, um, I had a, a little bit of uh, pre-FOMO looking forward to this weekend. Oh. Can you guys help me out maybe? Yeah. Are we, gonna, are we not going to have any gooch this weekend? Because last weekend we had multiple gooches. What are you, oh, 
Oh, the uh, golfer. Two, I think the golfer is probably competing. T- Taylor Gooch. Yeah. And then there was Dusty Gooch. Mm-hmm. I can't go from two Gooch weekend to zero Gooch weekend. Yeah, we. I th- I hope that Taylor Gooch is competing. I I would assume he is. Yeah. Right. He's got to be. Jake, check that for us. Hank. Stand by. You? Brooks did just hit a thirty-five footer. He's one off the lead. Of course he is. Oh, it's fuck. Bad. Wait, yeah, but wait. That's is. not Puerto Rico, is it? Nope. No. Other one. Concession at, in Bradenton, Florida. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um. All right. Before Hank tells us his genius I don't genius see Gooch ID. on the beater leaderboard. Okay. Well. He's got to be there. Somewhere. Or he could be at Puerto Rico. He could be at Puerto Rico. Um, all right. After taking a brief hiatus from outdoor activities and workout routines, it's time to get back to the grind with new spring essentials from Mack Weldon with body mapping technology and fabric mesh zones. Mack Weldon stealth boxer briefs deliver enhanced breathability and support. Perfect for everyday wear or to be layered underneath workout gear. And for sweatpants, you can wear outside without the feeling like you're wearing sweatpants. Check out Mack Weldon's new Ace line. They actually sent us the sweatpants. Very, very comfortable. You want sweatpants that don't make you look like a schlub, like Billy. You want sweatpants that make you look good and feel good. There's there's something about putting on, like, a nice pair of sweatpants on a Saturday. You feel people might think, hey, that's a guy who just went to the gym. Oh, yeah. Probably yeah. didn't, but that is a guy who could have gone to the gym. So, Mack Weldon has it all. Socks, shirts, hoodies, underwear, polos, active shorts. Uh, they look great, feel great. Working out, going out, going to work on a date. Mack Weldon is for everyday life. Any situation you can think of, Mack Weldon has you covered. Totally free. Uh, uh, Weldon Blue is their totally free loyalty program. Level 1 gets you free shipping for life. Once you reach level 2, by spending $200, you get 20% off every order for the next year. That's crazy. So, uh, Mack Weldon wants you to be comfortable. So, if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep them. And they'll still refund you. No questions asked. Uh, so, go right now for 20% off your first order. Visit MacWeldon.com slash take. Enter promo code take. That's MacWeldon.com slash take. Promo code take for 20% off. I'm telling you, uh, the sweatpants are must-haves. Go get it. Sweatpants and sweatshirts. Get it at MacWeldon.com slash take for 20% off. MacWeldon.com slash take. 20% off. Reinventing men's basics. PFD, what I thought you were going to say about this weekend was we're back. Guys. This is how the, the calendar works. We finally made it. We're fucking springing ahead. So oh, yeah. changing your clocks on Fact. Saturday night. Finally, we're going to get that extra hour of sunlight. I like. There's nothing better than getting to that point where we finally reach it. We're going to change our clocks on Saturday night, and then boom, it's going to be 6.30 before the sun sets. Right. Well, for me, it's actually been the entire like four months because I never change, and so I've, I've always got that to look forward yep. to. If you've got a car that you drive every day, if you've made it, you drove congrats, through the zone. You congrats, made it through the zone. Congrats. That's the most accomplished I ever felt when I was driving my car. When I was like, you know what? I didn't change my clock. Finally, time caught up to me. Yes. You made it. Don't be late for work on Monday. Uh, there's it some, sprung forward. There's something just beautiful about that. When you know The first Monday after we spring forward, which is this Saturday, mm-hmm. is to change your clocks. 2 o'clock in the morning, is that right? Uh, yeah, 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Sunday morning, it becomes... Two, three a.m. Three a.m. Yeah. So that that there's something about that extra hour where you get out of work and it's like, oh my god, it's still light up. This yeah. is great. It feels great. Yeah. It's like if this had lasted one more week, I was going to off myself. Yep. So me thank too. God it's back this week. Yes. Yeah, so uh, just a little shout out to everyone We're looking out for the AWLs, Billy. We don't want you to be late. Uh, Hank, your genius idea that's going to make us rich in a week where we have reached. Great financial independence by buying highlights online. Uh, that's we, We're just rich now, right? Because of highlights assets, online. Assets. They're assets. assets. Yeah. Digital right. assets. This one, uh, Crypto punks. This one will require a little more work. Uh, I know you're old, Big Cat PFT. You're getting old. I'm getting old. Mm-hmm. So it's my, you know, someone young that really has the time. It also occurred to but me that But there we, is a new sport that's Billy, blowing up. And I think we can get in on the ground floor and make a lot of money. This dude, Paul Macbeth. Today signed a ten-year, ten million dollar contract extension to play disc golf. Ten-year, ten million. So this guy, he was like, you know, he's, like he's, he's the Michael yeah, Jordan of disc golf. His first it's contract like was like a year, like two hundred fifty grand. He sold so many fucking discs or whatever frisbees. Frop, his, it's his, called banging chains. His bro. signature line sold so many. There's such a huge market there. They signed to a ten-year, ten million dollar contract, and it's something I think if we just get our froth on. We can we can Again, get in and banging chains, bang chains, and you know, 
make millions. Ten so, years, ten million doesn't seem like that much money to me, actually. For fucking disc golf? Yeah, it seems like kind of a broke boy. It's a sport. fun sport. It's yeah. I actually really I I aspire to be two things in my life. One is a car guy, and the other is a frother. Right. Like those are that's if I could envision my perfect self, it'd be know how to use a know how to uh, like fix a car and have some antique cars, and then take my antique car. And bang some chains. How many times, Big Cat, in your life have you been like, I wish I could pursue my froth, you know, dreams, but I have every to day. I have to make money for my family. And literally every day. Now you don't have to make a choice. Yeah. You can just do it. Do both. Yes. Okay. In. So who sponsors them? Uh Discraft. Discraft. So it's it's a frisbee say. company. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. And they're actually I mean, they're so sick. You wear your little satchel and you got your your different froth discs. You know, like they're clubs. Yeah, I mean, you don't you, just use the same disc. Uh, an AWL emailed me this. Uh, his name was Cayman, which I thought was appropriate for a guy that's really on the, you know. He definitely Cayman, wears Tevas. Cayman's scene. good. Maybe even has a rat tail. But, but still, I read the article. I was, I was like taken aback. I was like, wow, there's some real money to be. I mean, you know, we're in, we're, we're trying to get rich quick, right? Like, right. actually, you know what? This like, is the week where it's just like, what should we do? Should we buy like this is bears? investment week? On should part we of buy my cards? <laughs> disc golf or should is, we buy some fucking chains? It's pandemic and start training. Is what it is because it's an outdoor sport. <laughs> You're always socially distanced. I just, you don't have any friends. It's perfect. I have to correct you, Hank, because if we're gonna get in this, we have to buy chains to set them no, up, and then we dude. bang them. We, we buy them, and then we bang chains. them. That's why it sounds cool when you but say you want to go bang some chains, bro. And Wait, then you're talking about froth. Yeah. Okay. You have to buy them to set them up, and then you bang them. Okay. Why Why do we have to build our own bang chains? No, we course. don't. We're you training. just go to the course, and you bang some chains. Yeah, I'm not going to bang my own chains. Yeah. You know, crap where you eat. Come on. Either way. Do you want me to do my drunk idea, too, or should we save that? That wasn't that, your that drunk idea? Your... <laughs> no, that, that's an investment. That's, that's, oh, that's, like, <laughs> that's like... That's yeah. like that, Let's nice. sit down. That, that's, strongest idea. Uh -huh. That's like if we were, you know, if the, if the microphones weren't here, I would have sat you guys down in a boardroom and been like, "Let's do this presentation, the whole thing." This is more of just like, you know, guys at the All bar. Right, like, his drunk idea is we sponsor a professional frisbee golf. Yes, we make a T-shirt that says "Bang Chains." Yeah. <laughs> that All actually right. would be a good that'd idea. Be, that'd be we, great. We actually, Jake or not, not Billy. Jake, can you get someone on that? Bang chains. Bang chains for do Barcelona you, sports. Do you bang chains, bro? Do you store? even bang chains? <laughs> yeah, do you even bang chains, bro? And it's just yeah. a fucking froth going into... Does hit up Triggs? Yeah. Maybe it's a dude throwing a, a froth with that rat tail I just talked about. Uh, khaki cargo shorts. That like are wrinkled. Baggy, baggy green shirt. Yeah, t yeah, baggy green shirt. Tiva's a little overweight, but not too overweight. Maybe a puka shell. Maybe a puka shell. And he's throwing a fucking perfect nine iron right at the chains. And it says, do you even bang chains, bro? Who do you think's winning a, a chain bang between this group? I could froth. Probably not me. I could froth. I've thought a lot about frothing, so I'd say just my mind is sharper than everyone's here when it comes to froth. Yeah, the the whole like practicing frisbee on the quad thing was never something I got into. So I, I feel like I feel like my discs are they're they're always flying at like a forty five degree get, angle. Yeah, you're more you're more. You, you, you know call. what I do? I you throw, throw Barry, things behind. Yeah. I throw like Barry Zito style. You're more, yeah. of, a, you're more of a lateral guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know? yeah, yeah. you got to get hozo. That's what they call it. Horizontal. Okay. Hozo. Get hozo. Get, I get level with up. it. I don't know if I say that, but it sounds cool. All right, now the drunk idea. Okay, wait, hold on. Wait, what about hey? Flush that out of my brain. Hanging. Brain and banging chains. <laughs> yeah, and his we'll, guy, his we'll have dicks, a whole line. His dick's out while he's yeah, throwing. Yeah, the we'll have a whole line of these. <laughs> All right. I want that shirt, Jake. It's chopped. Are you, do you have Triggs? No, I do not. Fuck. I got to do everything around here. All right, fine. I'm going to text them. You right, might listen to the show, too. It's chopped. Yeah, but I want it now. Okay. I texted him last night at 11.30 yeah, at night. I said, give me a Lou door yeah. dunking a skull. It's chopped. We got it. But for <laughs> building a bong. But for booze. Uh, okay. Wait, what? You know the show Chopped? Yeah. It's like but chefs. You get a you basket. Sometimes of, it's beer. You get a basket of ingredients. So sometimes it could be food. Uh huh. But that's Chopped. But for booze, you're making <laughs> okay. drinks. Okay. So you're making one drink. Give me an example of what's in my box. All right. You got fucking vanilla ice cream. Okay. Uh, All right. Grass. Yep. Uh, like something disgusting like some like Cum? spice or like something that's like you know really flavorful that's Cincinnati like Cincinnati chili mm -hmm. uh and then I don't know shaved ice okay asparagus okay and then you got to make a drink I have to yep. make a liquor out of that you have to make a cocktail a, a, something that you can serve but there's no booze Would you have the booze oh yeah yeah and uh <laughs> how drunk were you Hank yeah <laughs> 
You just forgot the booze. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah, just yeah. want us to make a salad. No, a no, no, no. Salad. Oh, I, I did forget the booze. No, I, I think what happened was Hank was out of booze, and he was like, no, was just looking at ingredients in his house. He's like, how can I get drunk out of these, <laughs> uh, off these things? <laughs> I was like, you ferment the asparagus? Like, what is no, 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 no. That's my bad. All right, all you do, you blend it all together, and, it's, and then you toss some whiskey in it, and you call it a milkshake. Boom. But someone else can make a better one. It's, it's you know there's plenty of bartenders in the world. All right, well let's try it. Let's have I mean we've already had a episode of Top Chef Billy vs PFT. Let's do it again. That'd actually be great. Let's mm-hmm. do it on our Twitch stream. I like or, I like uh, to Twitch let's do it on our YouTube. I like the chili talk. Yeah, let's do it on our YouTube. Let's do it. Set it up for let's do it Sunday night when we come in to do the show. We'll do a <laughs> ten minute chop for booze. All right. Okay. So you're gonna. Get I'll get the, the ingredients. I'll right. get the box. All the right. Boxes. Okay. And it should be the main ingredient. Should be Coors Light, or Coors Light. That's the, that's yes. Okay. Perfect. And then we'll taste test. Billy will let the meat talk. Should get steak. Should be part of this. Just so we I'll, can watch I'll, Billy. All I'll right. take care. All right. So maybe not Sunday. We'll do it soon. Soon. We'll do it on our YouTube channel. All right, good ideas, Hank. Thank you. Way to go. Appreciate it. I mean, we're, what, what were you going to say, Billy? I actually have a drunk idea, too. All right, All right, here we go. Let's go. It is investment week. So, is Bell not the first one? Sure. Let's just pretend that they are. Yeah. Billy's idea is that there's going to be a Peloton dating app. How did you? Oh, yeah. I think you I tweeted t- it I out. Tweet. Yeah. yeah, well, all these Peloton <laughs> people are so obsessed with Peloton. Like, it's like a, just, yeah. and everyone's just simping for their instructors. So, like, why don't you just make a dating app for all these dudes who get a yeah, I'll do you one better, Billy. I yeah. think we've actually passed the people obsessed with Pelotons. Now it's the people obsessed with people who are obsessed with their Pelotons. Mm-hmm. So now, let's get a dating app for them so they can stop complaining about people obsessed with it's Pelotons. It's Billy being obsessed right. with everybody else that's got one. Yeah, because if you knew Olivia Motto, you would not be talking shit about it. Right, her, like okay? six, six I'm, months I'm ago, people were talking too much about their Pelotons. Mm-hmm. Now we just have people talking too much about people who are talking too much about their Pelotons. So if we get them to date, then everyone will shut the fuck up. Do you guys remember like a year and a half ago when that commercial came out and like a, a slightly arguably sexist commercial about yep. Peloton was yeah. the biggest problem that we had in yeah. the entire world. That was nice. That was pretty sweet. That was pretty nice. Getting mad at like some husband buying his wife a $3,000 bike. Damn. That was a good time. Yep. And now here miss, we are. I miss that. And now, era. well, I mean, we're solving all the world. Do you see Mr. Potato Head is no longer? It's just Potato Head. Just yeah. Just Potato Head. Just Potato Head. What guy. were you going to say? It's my fire fest. Oh. Save it for All tote. right. For, forget you didn't yes. hear that. Forget you didn't hear that. Let's get to our interview with Donnie Brasco, Joe Pistone, the real Donnie Brasco. A uh, fascinating interview was in, infiltrated the New York City Mafia for like five years. We now welcome on a very special guest. It is Joe Pistone. Uh, you know him as Donnie Brasco, former FBI agent. I guess you're an FBI agent for life. Uh, if you haven't seen Donnie Brasco, go watch it first of all. G- go read the book, Joe's book. He was undercover in the mob, in the New York City Mafia, uh, for uh, many years. And uh, went, you know, 200 indictments. One of the craziest stories out there, uh, if you don't know it. I think everyone does know it, but... Thank you for joining us, Joe. We appreciate it. Uh, got a million questions. I guess the first one is, where are you right now? I'm uh, on the East Coast of the U.S. Oh, okay. I like this. All right. You can't really tell us. We also have a sunglass off. What's the weather like where you're at? Mm. Cold. 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 Oh. oh. Well, I'm oh. wearing shorts right now. There so has it's... been a cold snap throughout the U.S. So Yeah. It yeah. is winter. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So um, you also have a podcast uh, that is called Deep Cover. What What do you guys talk about in the podcast? Is it basically stories from back in the day? Yeah, it's uh, Deep Cover, the real Donnie Brasco, and it's on Jam Street Media is our uh, production is a production company. It's basically, uh, we, we've uh, got 19 episodes in a can, and it's basically uh, about uh, organized crime, the mafia, my days undercover stories that uh, weren't told in a movie or uh, in my books regarding my undercover endeavors. Uh, and we're hopefully going to start up uh, second season pretty soon. But nice. uh, I, 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 I listen, I, <laughs> I really appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, when, when I told my, uh, my grandkids, they were like, no. Come on. You <laughs> I know. love it. Oh, guys got to have you on. <laughs> they were like, you guys, I tell you what, you guys are, you guys are, 
I don't know. You're you're rock stars. Well, you were made guys. Yeah, we're, yeah we yeah. we actually <laughs> look at you the same way because I don't know about Big Cat, but uh, for me personally, Donnie Brasco was one of my favorite movies growing up. Loved Thank it. You very much. It's Thank it's you. it's one that I watch every you know five years or so, and uh, the story behind it is just endlessly fascinating to me. Um, I guess my first question for you would be like, when you were growing up, did you actually want to be in the mafia, or did you want to be uh, on the justice side of the law? Well, growing up, I always wanted to be a cop. I always wanted to get into law enforcement, you know. And uh, <clears throat> I grew up in in Patterson, New Jersey, and I don't know if you guys are are aware of any any uh, towns or in Jersey, but uh, Patterson was, a, you know. Uh, typical blue clock blue collar town and i grew up in an italian neighborhood so there were you know there were wise guys in the neighborhood i knew wise guys growing up uh went to school with you know some of the kids uh of the wise guys but it their life never attracted me you know uh and i think i i take that back to uh my upbringing you know my father uh worked in bars had bars was a hard working guy and, you know, although we, uh, <clears throat> we knew all the, you know, all the gangsters in the neighborhood, it was always, hey, you know, uh, that's not the way you want to go. Because, you know, you, you, you see, the, you see the, uh, the social clubs, you see the guys, you know, nobody works. They're hanging out all day. They got the flash, the cash. That sounds, to me, like that actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Like you see a bunch of wise guys flash hanging out. Flash and cash. Flash, cash at a social club. Mm -hmm. That's that's the triple crown. Baby. Yeah, it's 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 cool if you you know if you if you lean that way you know. But like I say, I had a I had a good upbringing and uh, you know look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, growing up, you know, I gambled. I you know shot craps in the streets, went to the racetracks, uh, but it it just wasn't a, a, something that attracted me. I always wanted to be a cop, and that's that's the way I went. So. So 1976, you go undercover, and it's supposed to be only a six-month operation, but you take it takes six months, right, before you even get introduced to, uh, like, guys in the mafia that you can start doing some undercover investigation for. What was that process like? What was that six months trying to get known and have people be like, oh, this guy's just a guy around the streets. We see him. We know him. He's not just a random guy who just showed up. Yeah, well, I had, I had just come off a year and a half uh, undercover operation where I had infiltrated a, uh, a gang of thieves that were stealing high priced automobiles. Uh, <clears throat> in other words, you came to us and said, Hey, I want to, I want a Mercedes Benz." Well, we take your order. And then that night we go out to the Mercedes, uh, dealership and, and hook the car. So I did that for a year and a half. I get back to New York and my, uh, supervisor was a, uh, an old time New Yorker who had done undercover in his day, Guy Barada. And he had this idea of uh, an undercover operation. And the, the initial, all undercover operations are funded for six months. And then every six months you have to renew them. So that's why it was, you know, a six, six month deal. Uh, and the idea was uh, to see if I can infiltrate fences. You guys know what fences are, right? Guys that, uh, that broker stolen, stolen uh, commodities, goods, swag. And uh, the idea was to, uh, and you have to have a profession because nobody, you know, nobody's going to deal with you if, if you don't have a profession. And uh, so my profession was, I was a jewel thief. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason being is that you could do jobs without, you know, you don't need a gang to go do jobs. I can bring, I can bring diamonds, precious gems around. So I went to school, learned all about diamonds, precious gems, learned about the, uh, uh, locks, alarms, safes, whatever. And uh, then, then the idea was we had certain uh, restaurants and bars targeted that we knew that these guys hung out in. And the idea was to go in and, and hang out and hopefully get into conversation. Well, if you know anything about the mob, you don't just walk in and say, hey, I'm Donnie Brasco. I'm a jewel thief. I want to hook up with you guys. It doesn't work that way. Uh, so it took me about six months going into these different places, uh, just hanging out, getting something to eat, having a, having a Heineken. Uh, and then finally, I, I, I got in a conversation with a bartender uh, who was hooked into the mob. And 
that's how I, that's how I, uh, my actual first uh, uh, initiation was uh, with these guys was, there was bartender that was, but was a guy that was hooked up with the Lucchese uh, mafia family out of, out of New York. So uh, in the movie, you get introduced, I guess it's to lefty, you, you help him out by spotting a Fugazi, a, uh, a fake diamond. How do you tell if a diamond is Fugazi? Well, back then in the day when I was pretty good at it, uh, <clears throat> I had the, you know, I had the glass and you look and you see, if you see scratches, you look at the, you look at the color, uh, you know, and, and can you really, if it's really a bad uh, fake, then you can tell, but this one, you know, this one didn't look really great. And I just took a shot that, Hey, it's a fagazi, you know, and, <laughs> and it was. So not to glamorize guys in the mafia, because obviously they are criminals, but did you have fun? Was it fun when you were hanging out with the guys? I imagine it was fun at times where you're like, this is actually like, we're hanging out, we're busting balls. We're, we're having a good time watching sports, playing pool, whatever it may be. Were there times when you almost had to remind yourself like, Hey, you're a cop. Like you're not supposed to be having fun. Yeah. Well, you know, you have to remember you're dealing with human beings. So <laughs> even though they're stone cold killers, you know, somebody has got a good side to them, you know, they, 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 they got kids, you know, they got wives, they got gumadas, uh, they got kids that, that are okay. Some of them got kids that are a pain in the ass, like everybody else's kids. Uh, so some of them, you know, some of them are jokesters. When I mean by jokesters, you know, they're, uh, they're natural uh, comedians. Uh, some of them are just stone cold. So, yeah, you know, during the day uh, when you're not doing anything, you know, you're hanging around the social club, you know, playing gin, BSing. Uh, guys are cracking jokes. Guys are talking politics. Guys are talking whatever. And, and not that they're experts in anything, but, you know, they're, they're, they're new, normal people that way. So, yeah, you know, you do sometimes you do, you know, you, you could bitch around with the guys. You have to because you have to you, you have to fit in with them. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <clears throat> did you sure. ever did you ever forget that your name wasn't Donnie? Like if somebody called out for someone else like, hey, Joey, did you ever turn your head? No, actually, I never did. I'll be honest with you. Uh, and uh, that's my middle name. And that's why I took it, you know, uh, but uh, I was used to it. And the uh, funny thing that the operation I had just come off, I, I used the same name. So I was, you know, for a year and a half, I was used to being Donnie Brasco. Yeah. What, what was the closest you ever got to, to getting caught, to having your, your cover blown? Obviously, we see it in the movie, but was was that true to form that, you know, someone that you had worked with in the FBI had seen you and didn't know that you were undercover? Well, there were a couple of ones. If you, uh, you're you talking about in the movie with the attorney, with the uh, lawyer in the yeah. airport. Yeah. That that happened. Uh, <clears throat> he kept calling, calling. Uh, we were walking uh, toward each other and I was with uh, Sonny Black, who was my capo uh, in, in the Bonanno family. And uh, when he got out close, I just clocked him because uh, I didn't want him to keep, you know, uh, calling me and everything. And, and you know, Sonny says, uh, Donnie, what did what, you do? I said, Sonny, Sonny, did you see what the guy did? And I don't, can you say anything on here? Or yeah, you say anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, he grabbed my prick. <laughs> <laughs> So I got to clock them and we kept going. Uh, <clears throat> you, you saw the boat. Yeah. You, you saw the movie. Well, that was an FBI boat. And uh, that boat was used in app scam. I don't know if you guys ever heard of the big app scan investigation, the undercover uh, operation the FBI had against uh, uh, politicians. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I was never to be surfaced. Uh, and uh, the news media found out about the operation, and they wouldn't squelch the, uh, they wouldn't squelch it from printing it. So uh, when that came out in the in in the paper, we were on that boat. I took the wise guys on that boat for a fishing trip, and I was with Lefty one time. Uh, we were on an airplane, and uh, the picture of that boat was called the Left Hand. It was on the front cover, I think, of Newsweek or Time. And he looks at it and he looks at me and 
He said, Donnie, you know this boat? I said, no. I said, I don't know that boat. And it's, you know, big picture of it. Big picture to the left hand. And he said, uh, we were on that boat. I said, nah, we were never on that boat left. He said, yes, we were. I said, how do you know? He said, what's my name? I said, Lefty. He said, what's the name of this boat? The left hand. I said, he said, you think I can forget that? So a few months before he and I had been out in California and uh, <clears throat> we were having dinner and uh, there were two ladies there and uh, uh, he sent them over dinner. He said to the waiter, you know, send them over dinner uh, and drinks, whatever they want. Uh, and then when, when they were leaving, uh, we got into a conversation and uh, uh, I told him, I said, left, remember those two, those two ladies? Yeah. I said, you know, one of them, gave me a gave me a, a card and she said if you guys are ever in miami and you want to go out in the boat this is my brother's boat huh i said i said what the hell do i know that's how we caught you know that's how i got in touch with him uh so i skated on that one but he you know he was he, he always brought it up to me but you know i had been with him a few years now so you know he he kind of bought the story but that was a that was uh probably the closest yeah. So when you get revealed or, or w when the operation is over and they, they arrest everyone, did you I would imagine deep down you were like I, you kind of wanted to reach out to some of these guys and be like, because there's an emotional bond that you make over these years. How hard was that to deal with? Because they're criminals, but you also know them on a personal level and you've been living, you know, with them, being friends with them for multiple years at this point. I had no no problem with these guys getting arrested and going to jail. I didn't want to reach out to any of them after. Uh, that's just the way I operated in all my undercover endeavors is that, uh, look, you chose to be a gangster. I chose to be in law enforcement. Uh, I'm coming after you. And once it's over, then I leave. Uh, I never, the only, the, the only way I would talk to anybody after if they wanted to talk to me, I, you know, I didn't want to put the cuffs on anybody. Uh, <clears throat> I had no problem. you going to jail. Now, obviously I didn't want to see guys get killed. You know, like I said, they killed Tony Mira. They killed Sonny Black, not Platano because he was my captain. Uh, and they, they, they killed another guy. Uh, Rogerio was due to get killed, but the Bureau heard about it. They picked it up on a wire and they grabbed him before while he was on his way to get killed. But as far as feeling sorry for these guys, no. Uh, I, you know, that, that's just the way I feel. Yeah, uh, that's I, that's also probably the Hollywood aspect. You know, the in the actual movie, Donnie Brasco, they definitely make Al Pacino a yeah. sympathetic character and kind of a sad character that you feel bad for at the end. And I, and I, I was told the reason why is because... Uh, they had to make me look like a, a good guy because I was a bad guy work, you know, during the undercover operation for, you know, for being with these guys. So they had to make, make it like I had sympathy for these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. You, you know, that's the way, that's the way Hollywood operates. But, yeah. Is there yeah. any, is there anything that you weren't allowed to do? Like if, if they had asked you to participate in uh, in like the most grisly crime that you can imagine and you were in a car with these guys, like is there something that you could not have gotten out of had you gone along for the ride? Well, let me say this. The, 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 rule in, the rule in undercover is you can't get involved in crimes of violence. Okay? That, that's the rule. However, there's an undercover rule. And that rule is you are your own security. Nobody's going to save your life in an undercover deal except you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> example, I was, uh, uh, I was given a contract to kill somebody. All right. You saw the movie, the, the three guys that got whacked in, in the basement. Yep. Well, one of, it was supposed to be four guys. One, one didn't show. 
I got the contract to kill him. So that means I'm responsible for killing him. Now, <clears throat> in reality, in the mafia, you're given a contract. You, you don't say, the guy's my brother, the guy's my cousin. I know the guy since we were kids. You get the contract, you accept it. Otherwise, you get killed. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so I, I had to accept it. I had to go out looking for the guy. But the deal was, if I found them by myself, I'd call the bureau. They would grab them <clears throat> and we'd stage a hit, hit. And it would be the other way around, too. Uh, <clears throat> I never found them. They never found them. We get a call one day. We're at the club. And uh, <clears throat> we get a call. Sonny Black gets a call. And he says, Donnie, Bruno's at such and such an address. What do I do? So the guys, you know, we jump in the car. And we're going to go. Now, if I get there and we get there, what am I going to say? Hey, guys, you know. I'm really an FBI agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like timeout. Yeah. Game over. All right. Jigs up. Or maybe, or maybe let's, yeah, it's let's, me. Yeah. Let's go get some meatballs instead of killing <laughs> this guy today. Yeah. Right. But I, I don't, you know, so in any operation, if, if it's me or a gangster, it's going to be the gangster. Mm -hmm. And like I say, I'll take my shot with the government uh, charging me. That uh, That's crazy. So you had that mental thought like, all right, I'm going to have to go kill this guy. Well, yeah, if, if that's the way it came down. Yeah, that's nuts. We're going to get back to Joey Pistone in a second. Before we do, I want to talk to you about our great friends at Norton 360 for Gamers. Real gamers know that if you want to get good, you need to shield up and not just in the game, but with your devices and your connections. Hank, it's a new war zone now, right? New update. So what does that mean? Is it no longer Verdansk? No. Uh, update really didn't change shit. Zombies? Not really. So what does it mean? There's like mean, one new... means I have to play. Yeah. And if I correct. have to play, I want to make sure that I'm protected, right? Yes. And the only way to do course. that is with Norton 360 for gamers. Uh, otherwise, people can steal access to your gamer accounts, take over your webcam. I've just got my loadout set the way I want it. Heaven forbid somebody hacks into my account and changes it and adds a bad optic site where I don't want it. Uh, if you're not protected, you can lose your in-game progress, your inventory, and everything else that you grinded for. All those items that you've collected during gameplay, like weapons, cosmetics, skins, virtual currency, they can be sold for real money on various websites. Don't let today's cyber threats bring upon a real-life boss fight. You need Norton 360 for gamers. Security for your PC and devices that block cyber threats. You get a VPN for your online privacy, dark web monitoring for your gamer tags and more, and with fewer notifications. No one can prevent all cyber crime. But Norton 360 for gamers can help shield you from cyber criminals and they're going to give you 20% off your first year. 20% off at Norton.com slash gamers when you use promo code PMT. That's Norton360.com slash, or excuse me, Norton.com slash gamers, promo code PMT, and get 20% off Norton360. And now, back to Joey Pistone. In terms of like the actual undercover work and getting prepared for it, I know that, you know, there was that scene in the movie where you had, you couldn't take your shoes off in the restaurant because you were going to get found out. What's the best place to wear a wire? None at all. <laughs> <laughs> be honest with you. None at all. What I did was uh, <clears throat> I went to Radio Shack and bought a mini tape recorder. And I would keep it in my sport coat pocket. And did you or, ever... Or, or my cowboy boots. That, that, that time I had it in my cowboy boot. From a uh, just like a logistical standpoint, I'm always curious about how uh, the mafia operates, how the different families operate. Do you have like set times that most people are expected to be working during the day? Because there's no office, right? Is there like do some people come in nine to five? When do <laughs> when are people technically at work, or is it just twenty four seven? Well, it's twenty it's twenty four seven actually. Uh, it, it's a twenty four seven thing. Um, they, uh, um, you, you, you meet at, you meet at your social club basically, or, or where your, where your crew hangs out. Everybody, everybody's in a crew and a crew is headed by a capo or a captain. All right. Who's appointed by the boss. And 
you have to you have to maintain contact with your capo every day. You know, uh, most guys don't work. If they do, if they work, they might own a bar or you know or or a business, but they're not out there doing physical labor. You know, they might check in on their business, but you, your main uh, your main goal is 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 the mafia. That that's that's who that's who you worship. Yeah. What's uh What's the vacation like in the mafia? Is there a policy that they have, or can they just like if they want to go away for a couple weeks? Well, you got you got to tell your capo what you're doing. In other words, if I wanted to go to Disneyland, right? Yeah. I got to go. It's hey, sunny. I, you know, I want to take my my wife and kids away for uh, you know. All right, just check in every day. Mm-hmm. You got to check in. You got to check in every day. Um, I'm interested. I'm also curious about the the tie-ins with Major League Baseball, uh, the NBA, things like that, because I know that some crews were involved in point shaving issues back then. Was there any like athletic involvement? Any uh, any sports that you saw like having contact with the crew you were running with? Uh, not, uh, the, the only contact that I know that, that my guys had, uh, was with, uh, horse racing, mm-hmm. horse racing. Yeah. Uh, what's the state of the mafia today? Like, what is it? Does it still exist? Does it, I, I assume it still exists, but like where, what, what is it like today? Do you have any, any understanding of it? Yeah. The state of the mafia, cause I keep up with it, you know, through, through the, uh, through law enforcement, Basically, uh, they're down, reduced to a you know just another organized crime entity. I mean, they're involved. They're still involved in drugs. They're involved in gambling. You know, everything that that uh, can make them money. What 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 was taken away from them, and what they don't control anymore is you know back in the day what did they, they don't control uh politicians anymore uh they're 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 out of the gambling business in vegas and in in, in atlantic city and what i mean by that is they they're not taking the takes from the from the county rooms anymore uh uh they're out of the big unions running the big unions uh they're out of uh uh Controlling judges, law enforcement, you know, uh, and and the major unions, uh, but they're still involved in, in everything, uh, all, all the other crimes uh, uh, again. But when 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 we when I say we when law enforcement took away their ability to control the big unions, control politicians and judges, and you know, not that they may not be paying somebody here or there but not on a major scale like they used to i mean back in the day when i was in it there wasn't anything in the u.s that they didn't have their hand in making money Mm -hmm. did you um well what were the parts of donnie brasco that you think didn't get it right where they kind of missed the mark a little bit in terms of what your experience was, was like you know, overall, I, I think it was a good movie, and not because it's not Nebraska, but you know, it, it's it still got legs. I mean, there isn't <laughs> there isn't a night or day that goes by that that movie's not playing somewhere. But I, I I think I think what what they 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 really missed was the real danger. I don't know how you guys feel, but you know, when I watch it, I, you know, I kind of get the feeling, man, you know. It's a lot more danger than this movie showing. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe that's me because you know because I was there. I, I I don't know. This is a dumb question. I know it is, but whenever I watch a mafia movie or The Sopranos or whatever it may be, is there ever an element where guys like, hey, I've made enough money, I can walk away? I know that they can't, but where did you ever get that feeling from guys in the crew? Like, hey, I kind of want to just stop doing this. You know, I understand the risk. No, I never did. I never got. I never heard anybody say that they had enough. That's crazy to me. Just be, just yeah. simply by the fact that, like, you know, if you make a big score, if you have a ton of money and a ton of cash, like being like, hey, you know what? I've had a great run. I'm, I know how this is going to end if I stay here. Maybe I'm going to go live my life somewhere else. No. And you, you, know, you know what's crazy is that 
look, I was with these guys for six years. I, I lived with them. Uh, I, I, I stayed in the same apartment with them, slept with them. Uh, you wake up every morning thinking, is today the day I go to jail mm -hmm. or is it today the day I get whacked? Right. I mean, mm -hmm. It's like, it's like nuts, you know? Uh, but that's, that's, that's their, that's their mentality. That's their mindset. Uh, and if, if they, if they made a, a $5 million score today, then tomorrow, you know, they want it to be a $10 million score. Yeah. I, I never, never heard anybody, never, never heard anybody say, man, I wish I never got into this life. Yeah. I just can't imagine the anxiety of being like today could be the day that a cop just shows up at, at our, at the social club or at the bar and, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's every day to them was, you know, was, uh, what are we going to score today? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what'll get me killed. All right. Number one, <clears throat> good. These are good things for an undercover agent to know because you're never going to be in, in a deep cover situation where you're not going to get into a beef with somebody either verbally or physically. If I get into a beef with you, I can't insult you in front of other people. You and I have a verbal argument. I can't insult you in front of other people. That could get me killed. Hmm. Take it a step further. We're in this beef. You give me a smack. If I lay my hands on you, I'm dead. You can't lay your hands on a made guy. You know what a made guy is, right? Yeah. Made guy, mm -hmm. yeah. been officially in, in case your listeners don't know, somebody has been officially inducted, indoctrinated into the mafia. Okay. <clears throat> Never steal money from the family. That, all these will get you killed. The other thing will get you killed, you don't fool around with a wise guy's wife, daughter, <laughs> or girlfriend. That'll get you killed. Mm -hmm. So they have these rules and they live by them. They used to anyway, you know, the mob today, they got, the old, you know what the big downfall of the mafia was, is, and I saw it, young kids using drugs. Instead of, instead of dealing in it, making money of it, making money from it, mm -hmm. them, them using it. Like Christopher. Yeah, on Soprano, when when he gets addicted to to mm -hmm. heroin, then and sits then on Tony Cosette, kill him. and then he has to kill him on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no spoilers, no spoilers at all. Um, yeah. what, here's a dumb question: You mentioned like a, a wise guy's wife, daughter, girlfriend. What if you sleep with a wise guy's mom? <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I thought maybe that was a loophole. Maybe she's lonely. Who knows? Yeah, well, well, maybe if you're single, you're all right. But if you're married, then, you know, yeah. they, they don't look too kindly on that. Yeah. So, so I had one last question, and you can go listen to Deep Cover, the podcast. So I was reading about it. Is there still actively a hit out on your life? It's never been rescinded. But, I, you know, I don't think anybody gets up every morning and say, hey, I'm going to look for Donnie Brasco today, you know? Right. Uh, I, you know, what I do is, is where I live, they, they, the, the neighbors don't know who I am, uh, as I'm not really that friendly a guy with, <laughs> with neighbors anyway, but, uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it hasn't been rescinded, but you know, no, nobody's, nobody's out. You know, I don't. Think well, I you have a get... podcast, so yeah, I would assume that you're you're yeah. okay with talking. Yeah, yeah that's kind of I mean, like the, the yeah. question: When is the podcast bubble getting its fullest? It's like when guys who are hiding in undercover mm -hmm. and fear for their lives have very successful podcasts. It's kind of saturated at that point. Well, <laughs> but I I'm think it's more successful. <laughs> I, I'm excited <laughs> to listen to it. I really am because your your life I fascinates you me. Got... Yeah, I jam you. Hey, can I mention one other thing too? Yeah, I mean, if it's okay, yeah. Uh, I have another podcast. It's not mine. It's called The Undercovers. All right. It, there's one season out already, and I'm going to be the second second season. And uh, 
my good friend, Eddie Fallis, who is a uh, retired DEA agent undercover. And uh, you guys may have heard of Billy Queen. Mm -hmm. The uh, alone and undercover, the, the ATF agent that spent time with the Mongols undercover. Uh, we got a podcast. Uh, we just did, I think, nine episodes and it'll be out in a couple months. And uh, the exciting thing is, is that Ed O'Neill, you know who Ed O'Neill is, right? The actor, yeah. he, he's, he's one of the narrators, the main narrator. And uh, 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 Ray Liotta is the other narrator of it. Very and cool. Th that, should be, that should be out in, uh, I don't know, maybe another month or so. The, awesome. But, the, the Mongols one, that's the, uh, is that the motorcycle gang? Yeah, the Mongols, yeah. Yeah. Billy Queen, yeah. But my 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 main podcast, you know, is Deep Cover, Real Donnie Brasco. That's what I'm doing with Leo Rossi and Jam Street Media. Of course, it's on other, uh, wherever you, you get your podcast. And uh, Jam Street Media has got some, got some uh, wearing apparel that, that they're selling off of that. Uh, I'm not a good... <laughs> I'm not a good salesman. <laughs> no, no, this is a great plug. I, I honestly like. I'm going to. I'm going to listen to your podcast because absolutely, I, this type of stuff is fascinating yes. to me. It, yes. I think I've read maybe yeah. seven books in the last twenty years, and five of them are about the mafia. Well, I'll so. tell you, you, if you read the books, read Donnie Brasco, My Undercover Life in the Mafia, number one, and then read Unfinished Business. Make that the second one because that's a run up. And then I got another one out. Uh, well, it, it's been out a while called The Way of the Wise Guy. And that's kind of, you know, how guy, how wise guys act and what they do, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All uh, right. Well, uh, awesome. Hey, when, when, when does this air? Uh, probably in the next week or so. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I got one hey, last, I, I, last question for you. Did you watch yeah. The Departed? Yeah. What did yeah. you think of the ending where they zoom in on the rat? Did you get that? the zoom in like the rat symbolized yeah. a rat at the end yeah 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 I, I, i'd like to, yeah yeah hey uh again it was it was crazy because i told my grandkids you know and they're like wow you know those guys are the that they're the top uh and uh my one granddaughter who's uh she follows or uh po dave point what's it Port dave oh, yeah. yeah yeah it's her yeah. boss yeah that's her capo follows yeah her. He follows her on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Are we implicated now? Like, yeah. are we implicated as being associates of yours? Yeah, yeah sure. All sure. Right. You're under me now. All right. <laughs> well, that could be a problem for us. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank, thank hey, you listen, so much. Yeah. Your producers have my, my contact. If you ever need anything, call me. Great. Okay. I appreciate Sounds that. great. Thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, we I really appreciate, appreciate it. guys. See you, man. Thank All you right. very much. That interview with Joey Pisson was brought to you by our great friends over at Upstart. We love Upstart. You know you've got one of those credit cards, the one that you're afraid to even look at to see what the balance is. If you've been avoiding your debt, it's time to confront it. Upstart can help you face it and finally pay it off. It's never as bad as you think it's going to be. So look at it, figure out what your debt is, and then figure out a plan with Upstart. Last year showed us that you never know what life is going to throw at you. If you use credit cards to pay for unexpected expenses, it can be overwhelming to manage that debt. But you can take control with Upstart so you know exactly what to expect. It's the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. They find smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. With a five-minute check, you can see your rate up front for loans online from $1,000 to $50,000. You can get approved the same day and receive funds as fast as one business day. So if debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash PMT. That's upstart.com slash PMT. Don't forget to use our, U our URL to let them know that we sent you. The loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash PMT. All right. Uh, I just have sent the I've sent the uh, beta version of our new T-shirt. So. Let's see it. Yeah. It's going to look sick. Bang chains, bro. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, he's and that's – we need to name that guy. Like, it doesn't have to be on the shirt, but just so that – 
Trevor, Le- Tyler, uh, t- Lance, Lance. Come on, Billy. Get, get us something. The big Brody. time uh, frisbee guy that used to be a counselor at my camp. His name's Brody Smith. Brody, <laughs> there it is. Brody. Brody, Brody. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that guy's big. Is he? Yeah. yeah he's For real? Like you know Brody Smith? Trick I mean, I've You've seen his was, videos. I was in eighth grade. But All right, so just one on the record. That yeah. is Brody R. Frawford, but me. it's not the Brody, so no you can't shot see he remember. No, no. It's, it's a Brody a, that used to bang chains with Jake. Potentially. He would remember the camp. Yeah, of course. Yeah, backtrack. Yeah, then I remember. Oh, you were a camper there. Do you think he saw any future frothing? in you he created uh not disc golf but he created ultimate frisbee as an activity he invented ultimate frisbee no at camp he like started well, i mean that's he, like wait, saying like he, I no he basketball he invented camp. ultimate no he frisbee. started the league the no, ultimate frisbee but ultimate that's not ultimate frisbee is that'd be like saying hank invented jenga the mohicans invented well but the professional oh he did play barstool he brought it to camp is all i'm saying got it well that's important so it's like he introduced he brought, it to jake yeah uh, he, it's like Europeans brought football to America. He's he's uh, Eli Whitney. Yeah, sort of. He discovered. He's it. more like. No, yeah. It sounds like he discovered ultimate. Frisbee, he's more like Paul Rabel. Paul Rabel. <laughs> Rabel. Yeah, Paul, Paul Rabel. Because he, he created invented, the professional league. Right, but he didn't invent lacrosse. Right. But okay. Got Brody, it. I see what Bro, you're saying. Brody Smith. I love that name. Brody okay, Smith. that's Brody, Brody banging chains dude. on his shirt. He did uh, dude perfect videos. He did. Yeah. Cancel him. Uh, all right, Hank, Firefest of the week. Uh, my Firefest, we alluded to it earlier, but you know everyone's got everyone's got their favorite like toy they have as a kid. Uh, you stop. Mine was no. was Mr. Potato for Head. For real? Yeah, of course. It was like you know I I struggled with friends and for a while it was like he's Are you he's my right now? he's my guy friend he's my boy. Okay, no, Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Did you no, just like just him because of Toy Story? And then, of course. Well, it was like, I liked him. It was like, you know, you like someone and they go mainstream. And you're like, yeah. oh, I like them even you were, more now. You were a fan of his before he was cool. I right. have a question. Yeah. Was it, but is, they changed him today. They 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 massacred my boy. They, well, they, uh, they Hasbro massacred him. They is, neutered him. Yeah, they're giving him a spud, a, ne- a gender neutral na- new name. Just what, Potato what is, Head. Is it? Are they it's taking, just, are they taking away his head. dick? Isn't, isn't, it, isn't there a Mrs. Potato Head? Yes. Yeah. So what the hell is the problem? Right. And I don't know if they're changing her. My sister liked the Mrs. Potato Head. I liked the Mister. And now it's like, would I ever even gotten into him in the first place? So, so, I would so if hypothetically you had a stash of old Mr. Potato Head genitals, you stand to make a lot of money because they're about to NFT get rare. Him. NFT, NFT him, him. I'm, Okay, I'm going to NFT, NFT my Potato Head dicks. Uh, I would love to talk to the founder of Mr. Potato Head. Like, what? how high were you, dude? That, that, well, they that's were- the dumbest toy ever. No, they were originally just. No, they were literally like potatoes. It was potatoes. Yeah, and they, right. They so sold he, the accessories. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but he must have been high there. there then when he just started sticking shit in a potato to, to keep his kids busy. Yeah, well, I feel like in like the fucking 1900s, that's, you know. Yeah, that's, that's true. They better. did play with like a circular wooden, like, and, and a stick. And yeah, that was like, that's, like PS5. sticking <laughs> shit in a potato <laughs> yeah. is better than Game Boy. Yeah. It's like, holy, I can take this with me wherever I go. Right. I can take it in the horse. Call of Duty used to be just throwing rocks at trains. Yeah. Uh, all right, good fire fest. Sad no fire fest. Right. Is that it, Hank? PFT, what's your fire yeah, fest? Yeah, it's been a tough week. Uh, tough day, my, I guess. Well, my fire fest is uh, I'm passing a kidney stone. Or I did pass a kidney stone like a couple hours ago. I don't know if it's still going through right now. And I've got more. You're I, with stones. I was stones. I, I went to the urologist today. They checked me out, which it's always weird because they, you know, they got to make you take your pants off. Did they look at your dick? Looked at my dick. <gasps> Everything's normal. Um, but they. Did I, you laugh? No, because I feel like I urologists not. have to have a line for every person that they've got. Like, they think of what their joke line is going to be when they look at your chart so that it's not super uncomfortable when they're just, like, moving your dick. And so mine was, uh, hey, uh, are you related to that pilot that landed the plane on the river? <laughs> and he's like, because your name is similar. And I was like, my, my instinct <laughs> was in my in my sick brain from 5 years of doing this podcast the only thing i could say back to him was you know they named a drink after that guy it's <laughs> <laughs> perfect and that was perfect. and he's like he's like oh really and then I just didn't say the punchline to the joke. So I just I just set up the joke, didn't add in the gray goose and a splash of water. But that's the only thing that my warped brain could think to say as another man with a glove is, is touching my penis roughly. I think that's fair. I think, yeah, yeah. I, I'm lucky I got that out. Yeah. Like, I honestly like, felt like that was a great interaction after he left the room. Yes. But, um, yeah, I'm, I was currently passing one a little bit ago. I think 
I don't know. I, I can't tell if it's still going through my kidney or not right now, but um, sounds like you're milking it. My inside is is like the Infinity Stones, the Infinity Gauntlet. I've When's the last stone? Huh? Like, is this going to be? You know. You said I have at least six. How much longer do we have to live with these stones? A lot. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be mil milking it hard. I'm gonna be talking Talk about, about a lot. stones. So I've got a. Uh, I've got a, an appointment. Buckle up. Yeah. Buckle so I up, got. Folks. I got to name more of them. Yep. Yep. Rock Cartwright. Pardon my takeo spikes. <laughs> okay. I like that one. Spike Jordan. Okay. Bottom line is no more salads. <laughs> I fucked up by eating salads for a week, and now look at me. Yeah. Although they were. PFT came back. I was like, "Hey, how are you doing?" And he's like, "Yeah, they told me that sodium's really bad." And then, as as he was saying that, as the words were coming out of his mouth, he had an order come in, like the like Enrique, who works the front desk, walked Frank, over, Frank the tank, and it was just wings and and French fries. And I'm like, "Well," and uh. and I, I I realized how ridiculous it was because I looked at the receipt of my order and on Seamless when I ordered the wings, it was lemon pepper wings. And my uh, my request for additional notes on there was, uh, can you add in extra seasoning, please? <laughs> so maybe it, maybe it is some you know time to cut back occasionally on the sodium. Does this have anything to do with the hat? No, nothing to do with the hat. Just trying to yeah you know, yeah. If anything, the hat's been helping. Yeah. Um. All right. My fire is I have a zit on my nose. It's coming in and it's fucking painful. Doesn't look as bad in person. Let me see. It looked bad on that video. Really I look like Rudolph really, the Red Nosed Reindeer. Really bad. Yeah, it's also just really, really bad. painful. Yeah, I look like one of those guys who's been drinking for eighty years and his nose is gonna fall. <laughs> yeah. If you, you squeeze like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you squeeze it hard enough, you'll look like it, a, a clown face T-shirt. It hasn't come out. It's like maybe it's an ingrown hair. It just sucks. It's pretty much the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone. I'm sorry that you're going through that right Thank now. Thank you. I appreciate that. Credit but, you, you for know coming what? in, though. Yeah, I know. I came in. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Billy said all these comments about us seeming old. He did? You, when? You're getting you're getting a, an acne outbreak. Look at yeah. you. Are you are you're you basically running, a 13-year-old. Are you yeah. doing a cycle over there? Yeah. A little TRT? Yeah, trying to keep up with the young buck uh, over here. One thing that we should all acknowledge is when Billy was having that conversation with our boss, Erica, uh, he was talking about how old me and Big Cat were. To somebody that's older, to a woman who's older than mm -hmm. Big Cat, how do you think that made our CEO? And feel? also threw in twenty-seven-year-old Hank. <laughs> you basically called our CEO old to her face. Also, in a way that made it seem like we all have the same job. Yeah, Billy, I, I have one more day of motivation, then I will stop. I was just literally trying to show value. I just want that video to get to a million views, so everyone knows who stabbed me in the back. When I, when I'm, I'm laying sure dead it's already in the, past the oh, it is alright, good. So when I well, I'm still gonna tweet tomorrow. But when I'm laying dead in the gutter, and they're like, how did he die? Well, Old age. Billy Football. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Football came and fucking gutted him. No, nope, right, it was father time. What's your fire fest, Billy? <laughs> um, so last week there were It's reports. not your pants? No, I. Have, this is so much more. This is These pants, look, they're keeping me warm. They're, they're work pants. Covering my What are you, in legs? the resident? You're like, yeah, I'm wearing this thing. It's just keeping me alive. Well, that's <laughs> It's like, dude, they're work pants. I'm at work. It's like, no, they're work pants for if you're on a construction <laughs> yes. site. Yeah. Okay, anyway, um, last week there was reports out of Tasmania that they spotted ah, the Tasmanian yes. tiger, which went the last. So humans suck and tend to kill large predators when they go into a new area. So the Tasmanian tiger, uh, the last one, died in captivity in 1936. The Tasmanian tiger is a large marsupial that uh, carnivorous marsupial that the only reason they say it's a tiger is because it has stripes on its back. Imagine it's, it's more like of like a nurse a, shark. It's just a name. It's not right. actually a Dude, tiger. Dude, you post right. that picture, or I saw that picture. It looks like Stella. It looks yeah. like my dog. Yeah. Yeah, so it, maybe yeah, I have exactly. one. It's maybe. just a brindle marsupial. Yeah. Well, the stripes, it, yeah. It's like half kangaroo, though. Yeah, it's like... A, Imagine like a, a dingo with a pouch with stripes on its back in like a really big mouth. God was drunk when he made Australia, the mm -hmm. entire continent. He was like, he was celebrating after making everything. He's like, I did a great job. We all, look at this. This is an elephant. Look at this. It's an orchid flower. It's so beautiful and intricate. And then look, here's a fucked up uh, duckbill platypus that looks like it's a beaver that I stapled like a, a bill to its nose. Yeah, giant sharks and fucking yeah. little like enlarged squirrels that crawl really slow up the trees yeah. and have syphilis. Now I'm going to make an island where everything that you touch will kill you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so there was a trail cam footage of what looks like a finish. family. Wait, hold on, one more. Uh, 
What, what else we got? Oh, there's, oh, a, there's a giant rock that I'm going to put out here that just looks like a chick's yeah. mound. Yeah. The biggest spiders you've ever fucking seen that you have to kill with a shovel, otherwise they'll eat your babies. And you're only allowed to live within two miles of the coast on the entire fucking island so that you're mm -hmm. closer to the sharks. Yeah. Wombats poop cubes. Um, so <laughs> Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. They're cubes. I'm fact checking I wish that. I... I like Wally. Cubes if I have too Wombats. many painkillers. I'll tell um, you that. So... There was a trail cam of what they thought was a family of this, and everyone was freaking out because they're like, nature is healing. Like, this extinct animal is actually not extinct. And turns out it was just a bunch of wild dogs. Yeah, so I, I saw the biologist that was taking credit for it, yeah. and I guess he's a pretty respected, like, he's a big name in the field of animal, like, zoology. And he was walking down the street. It looked like he was probably, like, halfway to being Johnny Damon levels of drunk. And he just had like a, an open beer can in his hands. He was like, great news. We discovered the tiger. The tiger's not dead. And he's like this. He's like a famous doctor in Australia. Oh, yeah. And he's just fucking hammered he walking was, down the street. If, if, it's like that is the most perfect Australian doctor that I've ever seen in my life. Like the he's probably like the, the 40th drunkest person in his town. It's probably so his he, life's work. So he just found a couple tiger. dogs. Well, they look like Tasmanian tigers. Can I see the picture of them? By the way, I'm looking at the cubes, the wombats. Uh, poop? It's pretty crazy. Anyway, turns out it wasn't, and it was really disappointing because I got really excited. It's a fucking dog. I almost started drinking. No, I'm joking. Uh, Jake, <laughs> trying to take all our tigers fest? away. Um, I present to you one of the biggest scams in America. Top, Top shot? shot. Uh, Chapstick. Mm. I keep losing mine. Yep. It is impossible to finish a stick. I've been on this for a while. Oh, really? But in a different way. Go ahead. No, like I have to buy a new one every week. You know what you got to do. You gotta fucking wear it as a necklace. You're also, they've no. also addicted it. You've gotten addicted to it. Yes. When mm -hmm. you don't even need it at all. J our fun. darling no. Jake is addicted to chapstick and to nose spray. <laughs> I'm over you, that now, knock no. on wood. Yeah. But it's ridiculous. What, what How many days you sober are you? Jake? Your lips get chapped. Mm -mm. My, my lips don't ever get chapped. Neither bitch. do mine. Do you mine use get chapped. Big cat? Mine get chapped, but you know what? You give him a kiss. It's because I use chapstick. Right. But to my point, you got you, the spike you, in me. You just buy one. It's it's cheap. It's two, three bucks. But then you have to buy one next Whoa. week and the week after. Do you know anyone who's Money ever finished marsh. a chapstick? Nope. Yeah, yeah, exactly. cha yeah chaps his wife. Oh, damn. That's good. That is good. That is good. That is good. That is good. Yeah. All right. That's, so, yeah. that's the show. Everyone, numbers 99, 20, 18, 8. 32. 17, I'm fucking... I'm oh, trying. shout out Mike Greenberg. Mike Greenberg, they just announced he's going to be doing the NFL Fuck draft. Oh, great, another show More, more greeny. All it's greeny the all the water. time. He, he seriously is, has had a power play for every job at ESPN. Yes, he wanted, every, he wanted it just to be ESPN greeny. 73. 73. They should do... He should also do, like, a over-the-top, a premium. First timer. Yeah. Like, OnlyFans style. That hmm. was a first timer? Holy shit. Hank... Still nothing. Liam said 17. So. It's crazy that we have only had Liam, no, Billy, Liam, and Jake. Yeah. All right. Billy, do you have an animal fact for us? Yes. Wombat's puke. Yeah, I, was gonna say, puke. I, I, that was, I didn't blow my load too early on that one. Okay. Uh, nice. Off the coast of Ireland, there is an island of feral wallabies that just live there. That sounds pretty cool. Mm, nice. Wallabies are like smaller kangaroos. Love okay. you guys. Love you guys. See you guys Monday. Love you guys.